Yo, 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 what's going on guys? It's Hens back with another video. In today's video, uh, I'm going to be telling you guys how I built six team of the years and six team builders going to be soon uh, with the remaining coins that I have in my collection uh, completely free to play. So at the current moment, I have seven team of the years and I have three team builders. Uh, I'm going to be transparent. I spent some money at team of the year to get one of the team of the years done. However, I believe, I truly believe that if I had just spent, you know, maybe five or six more hours grinding the market during the team of the year week, I would have been able to get a free to play without spending any money. Um, but I did spend some money just because I wanted to make some YouTube content out of it. However, this is completely possible for anybody to do. I have lots of people in my discord who, you know, have all the team of the years, all the team builders, you know, a bunch of Evo cards, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera, and they did it all completely free to play without spending a dime on the game. And they're not even that good at the game. Uh, some of them, you know, some of them are in Division 2, Division, you know, 3. But like, they're all around, you know, somewhere Division 2, Division 3. None of them are really in Division 1. You don't need to be amazing at the game. You can get 11 wins in champs. You'll be that good. You, I, I, even I don't get 11 wins in champs every week. I'm a Division 2 player in PS5. But Sometimes I only get nine wins in champs. Sometimes I get bad matchmaking, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's completely possible to do without being completely, you know, super good at the game. And the way that I did it is by uh, working the market, as you guys would know from my channel. Um, but also, you know, kind of preparing uh, very much in advance. Um, what you don't want to be doing in this game, especially if you're a free-to-play player, is waiting till the last minute to do things because it's just going to end up, you know, biting you in the butt. Uh, in the long run. So, for example, um, when I went to build my team of the year cards, um, I took an, I kept an eye on the events that were that led up to the team of the years. Uh, I kept an eyes kept my eyes on the MSPs when they were you know not the best MSPs when they were really good MSPs. Uh, and then I would keep my eye on that and decide when I wanted to invest my coins into the fodder cards. And then I would uh, keep an eye on when I want to, you know, sell those cards to make coins, right? So uh, an event such as the uh, first week of the spreadsheet hockey was not super sought after. It was not a great week of event cards. Um, so therefore, the price of the fodder came down. So I invested basically the remainder of my coins into fodder that week. Um, and then they released the second week of the uh, spreadsheet hockey MSPs, where they released the Barzal, the Uyghur, uh, all those cards, the Bergeron, um, and the prices for fodder shot straight up through the roof. And um, it was super easy to make coins at that point. And I flipped all the fodder that I had. I almost doubled my coins that week, and that helped me get so many team builders. So just, you know, preparing in advance for what you want to do is the best way about going uh, about, you know, making coins and making all these cards in this game. Uh, in terms of team builders, however, you don't really have to invest in fodder for team builders, as we know. Uh, and you have to invest in these 80, uh, 180, and then 79 and below overall NHL gold players. Now, there's a ton on the market right now uh, for like even 1,100. Like these are the these are the type of cards that I would personally buy up um, to throw into the sets. Um, I have like an error code that comes up sometimes when I buy cards that are above a certain price. So let's see if it happens today. Um, but yeah, basically after every game that I play. Uh, to make these team builder cards, I came over to the market. I, I hit the uh, set my buy now limit. Yeah, see, there's the error. I set my buy now now limit to 1,100 coins. I bought up all the cards that were on the market. Went and played my next game. Set the buy now to 1,100 coins. Bought up all the cards that were on the market. Went and played my next game. Eventually, by by after about a week or two, uh, I would send them all into my sets. See how close I was. See if I had any extras. If I had extras, I would just list them back up on the market for a little bit of a profit on what I bought them at because I know I did not go above 1,100 coins uh, so that anything I sold above 1,100 coins would be profit or break even. Um, and that way you're making coins while you're doing it. You can even sell them as you're going. I just couldn't be asked myself. But if you do sell them as you're going, you're going to be able to make even more coins. Um, so uh, I would personally pick one division as, at a time if you're, if you're pinched on coins. But if you have a lot of coins, I would just buy up everything that you see because eventually the prices of all these cards are going to come down. Uh, or sorry, they're going to go up again, uh, especially when the new team builders release later in the month, uh, this month of February. Um, once they release later on in the month, then you're going to be able to sell them for a, a nice profit. Um, so even if you don't want to build any of the new team builders that come out, just start buying up these cards now like we did last time. Uh, I would take a look at buying up the Metropolitan and the uh, Pacific Division because they are the cheapest 
ones to build right now and that's what people are going to be wanting to build so the prices of the other divisions like the atlantic and the uh, central aren't going to go up too much more however the pacific division is going to shoot up in price just because it's the cheapest one to build right now um so people are going to you know start wanting to build those divisions so then they're going to get artificially inflated uh when the new team builders come out so that's a good way for you to make coins passively uh and make guaranteed coins on the market the other the other method that i was using um sorry, all-star, uh, was the all-star uh, method where I flipped all of these all-star cards. Um, so for example, somebody like the Seth Jones, uh, at the beginning of the week when these cards first released a couple weeks ago, he was going for like 70, 80,000 coins. And I would be sitting on the market, refreshing at the 59th minute, sniping them for 60 coin, 60K coins and relisting them for 80. And doing that, I made so many coins um, just flipping these cards on the market. And it was super easy for me to like, you know, shoot up my coins. Um, and I made, I made, I just made so many coins that week and that helped me build another uh, couple team builders. Um, personally, I would look at uh, flipping cards that are in demand, uh, cards that are in demand. Uh, well, as you see this video, the all-star game is probably happening when you're watching this video. So I would be going on the market. I would be setting my filter to NHL all-star watching who scores in the game, trying to buy those cards as quick as you can and list them back up on the market. Somebody like Dylan Larkin is a player that I took a risk on recently just because I wanted to buy him because I thought he would win the fastest skater. Obviously he did pretty poorly in the fastest skater. So he, you know, kind of crashed in price, but I wasn't too worried because I bought him uh, when there was so much supply, I bought him at 50,000 coins. If you look at him now, he was selling for 70,000. I could have sold him before for 70,000, um, but I, you know, I held on to him and now he's only going for 47K. I only lost 3K coins and this card is completely usable. When he goes out of packs uh, after this weekend and after st people stop listing him, I'm, I'm pretty certain that he'll go above 50K just because he's got gold wheels. He's a great starter card for any starter team. Uh, this is a first line center, first line winger for any starter team in the game. So, you know, his price is going to artificially get boosted up uh, here and there. So just keep an eye on that. Uh, and then the last method that I used was obviously the token 59th minute method. Now at the start of the year, I did 84, uh, 84 plus, um, and I was snipe, snipe like this. Now that the game has progressed a little bit, there's not really any point in sniping below 85 overalls. So I personally set mine to 86. Um, just for argument's sake for this video, I'll set it to 88 just so I can get to the 59th minute pretty fast. And then basically what you're going to do is you're going to scroll all the way over. If you see in the bottom, you know, kind of middle of the screen there, it says the time. Uh, if I look this way, I think I'm looking the right way. Yeah. If I look that way, then you guys can see it. Oh, I went past it because I wasn't looking at my screen. Um, and yeah, you're basically going to sit on the 59th minute, um, right on the end of it. So where this uh, Andre Svechnikov is, you're going to place bid, refresh, boom, pasta popped up. Um, you can maybe snipe him if you want to. Um, refresh, refresh, refresh. Um, a nice Robertson for 73k. That's not even a bad price for him. Um, and then you're just going to keep doing that until you see a card that's like under the value. So, for example, if a Sveshnikov like this card popped up for, say, wow, he inflated so much. If he popped up for, say, 100k, I would buy this card to try to flip it. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. Do not buy this card for that price. It is absolutely not worth it. He is not going to be that good in game. Um, but he is one that if, you know, it pops up for relatively cheap, you're going to buy it. You're going to flip it. So those are the main ways that I made coins and I, I, uh, you know, was able to make all these team builders. Um, another thing that you want to be looking out for specifically on new gen, um, just because on old gen people don't open packs a lot is the type of packs that are in the store. Uh, they're going to influence the market. So for example, these two packs here, the NHL players choice pack and the mega players pack, these are all going to give out, you know, a lot of, um, NHL players, and it's going to flood the market with NHL, like low rated NHL players. Uh, and it's going to be easy for you guys to buy them up for the team builders. So when these packs are in the store, you're going to be wanting to buy team builders. If there's only packs in the store, like the ultimate pack, and then maybe the 75 K pack, and then, you know, like maybe this prime pack, it's probably not the best time to buy NHL gold players because you know, they're not going to be as, you know, in stock in in supply. Uh, on the market but when there's packs like this that are pretty cheap people are going to buy them up they're going to list them on the market and you're going to be able to make coins that way with that being said i think i'm going to end the video there thank you guys all so much for watching and i will see you in the next one bye guys